we have already learned about the Kelvin cycle, the light independent phase of the photosynthesis, photosynthesis reaction. Now, if you haven't yet watched that video, I would strongly recommend you go back and watch that video about Kelvin cycle, which is super simplified and the link is given in the description. But roughly, Kelvin cycle has three phases: The stage one, which is carbon fixation, where the CO2 is fixed with the help of Rubisco enzyme and forms 3-phosphoglycerate, and that's the first stable compound in the C3 cycle. Now, the stage two is reduction of 3-phosphoglycerate to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecule is used to regenerate RUBP or it might be used to form glucose. Now, we completely understand that Rubisco or ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase is a key enzyme of the Kelvin cycle. In this video, we are going to talk about the mode of action of Rubisco enzyme and how it can work in different situations and depending upon the differences in oxygen and carbon dioxide concentration, how Rubisco can function in two different regimes. So first regime is the carboxylase, where Rubisco can interact with carbo uh, car uh, carbon dioxide to form 3-phosphoglycerate. And Rubisco enzyme is a multimeric enzyme. Some of its domain are encoded by the chloroplast genome and some of its domain are encoded by the nuclear genome. And Rubisco enzyme's functionality is dependent upon CO2 concentration, O2 concentration, even magnesium ion and pH. So depending upon oxygen and carbon dioxide uh, concentration, Rubisco has to decide that whether it would perform the reactions of the Kelvin cycle and ultimately in a productive fashion produce glucose or carbohydrates which would help in the plant growth or otherwise it would divert into a wasteful process and form 2-phosphoglycolate and that is the photorespiration part. So Rubisco takes this decision based on oxygen concentration, carbon dioxide concentration, pH, temperature and magnesium ion concentration. All of these things are determining factor which pathway Rubisco would be involved in. So let's look at its carboxylase activity first. So here is the uh, carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide is going to be fixed in the rubulose 1,5-bisphosphate. So first there are lysine residues in the enzyme which actually deprotonates rubulose 1,5-bisphosphate and ultimately forms an indiol intermediate. With this indiol intermediate the carbon dioxide interacts and the carboxyl group is incorporated, hence the name carboxylase. Ultimately, that gives rise to two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate. This regime is preferred when the carbon dioxide concentration is high. Alternatively, Rubisco can work in an oxygenase paradigm or oxygenase regime where the first step is pretty similar. The deprotonation by the lysine group of the enzyme Rubisco forms an indiol intermediate. Now this indiol intermediate is a highly reactive substance which can interact with oxygen as well. Now once it is interacting with oxygen, it would form several intermediates which would ultimately be hydrolyzed to 2-phosphoglycolate and 3-phosphoglycerate. And this 2-phosphoglycolate would enter the phos uh, photo respiration cycle and would not produce the carbohydrates. So this is quite a wasteful process. But what we learned in this video is the carboxylation paradigm and the oxygenation regime of Rubisco and its functionality. So I hope you enjoyed this short video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you and keep watching.